Welcome to the first video in WordPress SEO and we're going to cover pretty much the basic settings. So first thing you need to do is decide whether or not you want www in front of your URL and in that one you look at the general settings tab. So on the left hand side settings, if you just click settings or, or general this will come up. As you can see I've got my site title, a tagline and then the URL. Now I've chosen not to have www mainly because uh, personal preference as much as anything. Uh, www is actually technically a subdomain but don't worry about that. What it means really is that people will type it in but either way that will go to trevordumbleton.com whether or not you type in the www. So that's the that's in the general settings tab. Once you're done with that just scroll down there's a save changes button further down that's just off screen. That's the first thing you need to change if it's not already set to that. Chances are it probably is, but just double check. Then on the posts choose a default category, so that's on writing and convert emoticons to graphics, fair enough, that's typically ticked. Um, ignore that particular one. I've got various ones, I probably should set it to that it defaults to uncategorized and if you've only got one post category then it, it'll be that. Um, default post format standard that's pretty much again you can always change it anyway and link category I've got links rather than blog wrong but you probably won't even have a link category it's because my site's been quite old so it's had those kind of things so once that's done you just go down again and press that. You probably won't have pressed this, it's a it's an add-on plugin that I've got that I may or may not use but it's I've not really got around to get rid getting rid of it. So once you've decided on those, just scroll down and press save. I was slightly off screen, but actually just below just above save is a thing called update services. Um, when you publish a new post, WordPress automatically notifies and it defaults to Pingomatic, that's fine, you can leave it at that, so that will do enough notification. There are people that put a, a list that's a mile long, but what happens is that slows down your um, your blog because it, every time you make a post, because it has to call each of them. And Pingomatic does a fantastic job, so you're fine leaving it at that. Next thing you need to decide on is the reading tab. Do you want a static front page, in other words, one that's always the same? Um, I tend to use that on mine, and it varies um, depending on what blogs I'm using, whether I do that or or default to number of things different posts and then how many posts on a blog page so that's on the readings tab and front page displays either your latest post or a static page if it's a static page you can select it and if it's a static page you then get a post page now blog is actually a um, <coughs> a blank page if we show you it this confused me when I first started WordPress but um, I called it blog and the actual page there is blank but if you get a view page that settings in the reading section will overwrite the blank and we'll put excerpts from Lotus posts and the reason the continue reading thing is there because I've put um, a more line in so that's slightly weird but that's what that does when you set reading to posts and then the settings there show up most 10 posts. Obviously, if you haven't got 10, it won't do that. Syndication feeds show the most recent however many items. If it's a feed, show either full text or summary. The default is full text. And search engine visibility normally leave it unticked. Um, what that does basically, it, it just says, I'm developing my site. Please don't index me yet because it's not really ready. And if you've changed anything there, just change, press the save button next setting you might want to change is the discussion. Um, I tend to leave that unticked, the attempt to notify any blogs, but if you if you have a blog where you keep getting ping requests and comments and things, that's where they're coming from. And again, that's why I've unticked the allow link, link notifications, pingbacks and trackbacks, because they I end up just deleting them anyway. But typically, if you don't want to allow people to co post comments on new articles, untick that and then just change it on an individual post but I tend to allow post comments and if, if I don't want it on a particular article I'll just get rid of so that's personal view but, yeah I want their name and email personally don't leave them as registered 
automatically close comments on articles older than 14 days. I've got that ticked. I probably shouldn't have. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, <coughs> it, you can change the, the days. Just however many you want there. Um, what that does, though, is just closes them and gets rid of the spammers to an extent. Because I can't comment. Uh, break comments into pages of 50 or more. I haven't got to that stage, but probably ought to tick that just in case. Um, oldest comments or newest comments at the top. Um, if if you're reading it, it's better if they're older at the top because you can follow through rather than have to start at the bottom and go upwards. Um, email me whenever anyone posts a comment. Yes, and they're, for me they're always held for moderation, manually approved, even if they've got a previously approved comment. You need to check the different things, you how you want to play that. Um, hold a comment in moderation if it contains two or more links. Um, that's That just happens, but you can add extra things there if you want to. Default blacklist I don't use. Avatar, yeah. But they, they have to be suitable for all audiences. I don't want ones that wouldn't. And then any changes you made, just press save changes. So that's discussion settings. Next up is permalinks. Now WordPress defaults to you can see there the default <coughs> site name question mark p equals a number that's just the post number um very short url but not very meaningful in the search engine so you don't have a um any words bolded in the search results for that the one i tend to go for is just post name if you've got a very active blog day and name or month and name but you'd need a really active blog and it just makes the url longer so I'd suggest that you go for post name. Um, optional, ignore because it's optional and you probably won't use it. And the final thing I'll do, I've got uh, the plugin from Add to Any, and that just I'll show you a post with that on. It's been easy, as easy to explain as anything else. It's just a very simple way of adding share buttons, and you've got a list there if you wanted to add loads. But the code is really simple choose the size, I've chosen large, you could choose small add or remove services, I've left as default I've pretty, left, pretty much left everything as default, well not quite everything um, so I haven't done the universal button, as you can see it's just that button, a longish one um, placement it defaults I think to bottom, I've chosen top and bottom not everyone reads right the way through and a lot of sites do have it at the top so that's there so display at the top and bottom of post excerpts um, posts on front page post on, so pretty much everywhere um, as it says if you if you don't check it then you've obviously got to put it somewhere manually um, menu styler customize the colors of your button again never done that I've not used the any of the other options really because it works well out of the out of the box if you wanted to as I said you can click the that and you can go through right away and make it fit exactly and you just get the code and put it in but for most people I would suggest that it just works and you'd, so you'd go to their site if you wanted to change it as I said you can customize pretty much anything Uh, that was the customised button which is just off screen but that shows that or you can just go through and just change colours change what you want in and so on so it's very very flexible but as I said tend to leave to the default and it works fine and that well, that's just the basics and as I said what that does it, it's not really SEO directly but it is SEO indirectly because you can people can just say yeah I want to tweet that page then it goes off to your Twitter account puts in a default thing there or you can change it so again very easy to do so that's the first bit next up we'll come on to in the next video we'll come on to the Yoast settings which is the SEO plugin I use there are other ones out there but we'll we'll use Yoast because it's pretty much default nowadays and it works well and it doesn't get in the way so that's the basics before you start with Yoast and we'll move on in the next video.